There's only one difference between a crazy man and me. The crazy man thinks he's sane. I know I'm crazy. Salvador Dali. Hello and welcome back again. At this point, the priest discards the plan of avoiding topics related to chivalry. He mentions that there is news at court that the Turks were approaching with a powerful armada. The news probes Don Quixote's particular madness because it relates to the numerous militia calls in the latter part of the 16th century, calls which justified the existence of the outmoded Hidalgo caste. Furthermore, the priest says that Philip III has reinforced Naples, Sicily, and Malta, this last island famously defended against the Turks by the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem. Notice, too, how all this relates to Cervantes' own heroism at the Battle of Lepanto. Don Quixote takes the bait and says he has the perfect solution. Here we get our first glimpse of a character's inner thoughts in part two. The priest observes to himself that Don Quixote has now fallen from the high peak of his insanity to the deep abyss of his foolishness. Did you know, in 1571, Cervantes participated in the Battle of Lepanto between the naval forces of the Holy League and the Ottoman Empire. He was wounded by two arquebus shots in the chest and the left forearm, thus one of his nicknames, the one-armed man of Lepanto. We also get part two's first conflict, as the barber says that Don Quixote's solution might join the list of those many impertinent recommendations which are so often given to princes. Don Quixote is clearly upset, mocking the barber by calling him Mr. Shaver. All pretense now drops as the priest even calls our hero by his chivalric name, Don Quixote. When Don Quixote says he did not want to share his solution with others who might steal his idea, the barber alludes to chess, swearing that he won't divulge Don Quixote's idea to neither the king nor the rook. He also refers to a certain ballad about a thief who robs a priest of 100 doblas and his mule with the wandering gate, thereby recalling two major issues from part one, Sancho's money and his missing ass. We also get our first case of bourgeois jargon in part two, when the priest vouches for the barber using contractual language. I vouch for him and guarantee his word. When Don Quixote asks who vouches for the priest, we get part two's first case of blasphemy. The priest responds that he doesn't need anybody to vouch for him. He alludes to the sacrament of confession, claiming that his profession is enough. It's all about keeping secrets. Don Quixote's reaction mocks the phrase that accompanies the bread distributed during the Eucharist. Here's the body. What causes the first conflict in part two? A, the barber's simplicity. B, the priest's religiousness. C, Don Quixote's chivalric ambition. Correct answer, C, Don Quixote's chivalric ambition. Don Quixote argues that the king could destroy the Turk if we were to enlist only a handful of men like Amadis of Gaul and Don Belianis. However, since those men are no longer to be found, the job falls to him. Don Quixote invokes God twice. God will look after his people and God understands me. At these words, his niece reacts in fear. Kill me now if my Lord doesn't want to be a knight errant again. But Don Quixote remains defiant. I shall die a knight errant. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.